this before we do anything. I just wanted to... Oh, sorry, sorry. <laughs> So this is not actually the lecture. I want just to go over um, uh, so just quickly about the basic anatomy of the lung. Uh, just that will help us uh, talking about the uh, high resolution CT scan. So the basic unit uh, in the lung, what we call the secondary lobule, and that's uh, basically the secondary lobule, which is about one centimeter, one and a half centimeter, and it's just forming the whole lung. In the middle of this secondary lobule runs the uh, terminal airways, um, and uh, each airway accompanied by pulmonary artery. And uh, this is the bronchovascular bundle, um, always accompanied by lymphatics, which is the yellow. Now the surrounding of the secondary lobule uh, is the lymphatic and the pulmonary vein. So that's the basic unit uh, of the lung and uh, the gas exchange will start here uh, at the respiratory and terminal bronchioles and um, uh, at that time you will not have any cartilage and the gas exchange will, will start. Okay, so, and as you know, like the division of the trachea till the uh, alveolar sacs, there is about like 23 subdivision. The uh, respiratory or the gas exchange will start when you lose the cartilage and start having the alveolar buds, and um, uh, that will start like from the 16 division. Um, and uh, that will help us uh, like interpreting the CT scan uh, because it's just a matter of like you need to uh, put some sort of imagination uh, what's going on or what the pathophysiology uh, when you just looking uh, when you just look into the uh, CT scan. So every time so you look into the uh, CT scan, you need to uh, just see what's the majority of the CT scan. So is it. And I usually like what I do, I open sometimes the coronal section, so it will give you the whole lung, uh, both sides, and by because the cross section, you will just have one cut and you don't see the whole lung. So the coronal section will give you just a, a picture of the whole, both lungs, all loops, and at that time you can just give your interpretation or what's the major part of this CT scan. Because sometimes the major part will be uh, reticulations um, or what we call it like um, honeycombing, for example. And you can, all the time, you need to decide on a few things. What's the major uh, part of the CT scan? What's the major pathology? Is it reticulation? Is it uh, nodularities? Is it cavitation? Is it cyst or consolidation or ground glass? So the coronal section will give you just the major part of, um, of this pathology. And when you look there also, after you decide what, what is the major uh, part of this CT scan, you need to decide where is this pathology more? Is it upper loops, middle loops, or upper zone, middle zone, or lower zone? So at that time, you can just narrow your differential diagnosis. Uh, for example, if you have uh, nodularities, upper zone, uh, so that will put you on a certain differential diagnosis. Middle zone, the same. Lower zone, also a different. So it's, it's only just will give you a differential diagnosis. And I think the idea of opening like the coronal section, looking into both lungs at just one uh, look and just... Uh, then decide, then you start looking into further uh, cross-sections or other um, CT scan slides. So, as I mentioned, usually what we are talking about either is it reticulations, which is like a linear scarring in the, in the lungs, or the majority is nodules. You can at that time define these nodules. Are they solid nodules or are they like uh, ground glass nodules or 
you can also define the nodules we will be talking about that but uh, one of the important thing nodules are they like in the center of the secondary lobule or are they follow for example the bronchovascular or lymphatic for example we know that uh, the pleural coverage and the fissures like it's very rich with lymphatics so at that time you know that if you have more nodules at that in, in these areas you know that we are dealing with uh, a lymphatic related disease like for example sarcoidosis so uh, that will help you also for example if you see these nodules more ground glass upper loop or middle zone a predominant at that time you will start uh, like uh, thinking of uh, maybe uh, hypersensitivity pneumonitis um, or um, you will start maybe thinking about um, smoking related um, nodules like RBILD and um, as you know these kind of diseases like hypersensitivity pneumonitis or smoking related lung disease they go uh, with the in inhalation of smoking or antigen that goes into all the way with the airway and will settle inside or in the middle of the uh, secondary lobule and the inflammation will start there so it will not follow a lymphatic uh, route it will go into more an airway route and uh, it will affect the inflammation around the airway and that at that time you might see it in the middle of the in the middle of the um, respiratory bronch uh, of, of the secondary lobule um, and uh, around the respiratory bronchioles. Uh, so that's the first thing you need to define. What what is the what is the major part or component of this CT scan abnormality? Is it reticulations, which is a linear scarring? Is it nodules? Is it cyst or airspace disease? Uh, which is either consolidation or ground glass. So we'll start with reticulations and reticulations we are talking about um, disease that either UIB or NSIB or chronic, chronic uh, interstitial lung disease, either chronic HB or for example chronic sarcoidosis or advanced stage sarcoidosis or any advanced interstitial lung disease that end up with fibrosis. So, for example, this case, 77-year-old male with a three-year history of progressive dyspnea on exertion. And this CT scan, so the majority you can see here, they are majority like you can, like reticulations. Um, and uh, as you can tell, there's a traction of bronchiectasis. There is uh, honeycombing, pleural based. So, as you go down, disease will get more. So, and that the section that I'm talking about, uh, the coronal section, if you open it, you will have a quick look into the lung. You can just narrow yourself what I'm dealing with. So, you can tell here that you are dealing not with nodularity, it's mainly with reticulations. And uh, as you can tell, that it's uh, there is a honeycombing. Now, there's a traction bronchiectasis. Now, honeycombing is the same pathogenesis like uh, traction bronchiectasis, where uh, there's a fibrosis causing traction of the airway, but it happens very distal and it causes traction of the terminal bronchioles. And by uh, tracting the respiratory bronchioles or terminal bronchioles, it will cause some rounded, rounded uh, structures that's pleural based. So, just looking here, as I mentioned, you, uh, you just narrow yourself into that I'm dealing with uh, a pathology that is mainly reticulations uh, causing traction bronchiectasis that indicates a chronic uh, process. And I can see there is a pleural base or uh, involving the, sub, the pleural space and it's uh, like a honeycombing. Uh, so your differential diagnosis will be very narrowed at that time. And it's a lower loop, so you need also to define yourself uh, because that will help you in the differential diagnosis. It's a lower loop, upper loop, so it's mainly lower loop predominant um, with reticulations, honeycombing. So this, um, it's UIB, let's say like it's UIB, 
because uh, IBF, one of the uh, causes for UIB is IBF, but uh, uh, that, so you can, uh, IBF or, uh, which is, uh, if you want to describe it as U, uh, UIB. So UIB, uh, the major uh, part, and actually that, uh, like in board questions, they will give you a description of the CT scan. So they will tell you, like a CT scan shows uh, pleural uh, based involvement with rounded structure or honeycombing, uh, lower low predominant reticulations. And they will put you a CT scan, but from just the question, you will know that they are talking about IBF or UIB pattern. Now, uh, the, it's very important to recognize these things in a CT scan, which is a honeycombing, uh, peripheral reticulations, uh, traction bronchiectasis, and lower low predominant, and very minimal ground glass opacities. And that's important because uh, ground glass, uh, there's not much of inflammation there. And actually, um, there is a dif differentiating uh, between uh, the pathogenesis behind the UIB. So uh, if we start talking about UIB, it's either IBF or there's a connective uh, vascular disease uh, that can cause UIB, like, for example, rheumatoid arthritis or um, systemic sclerosis. But most commonly, they can cause um, uh, rheumatoid arthritis can cause more UIB. Uh, systemic sclerosis or scleroderma can cause more NSIB, but uh, it can cause still UIB, not as common as rheumatoid arthritis. Now, drug toxicity, for example, amiodarone can give you the same thing, and asbestosis can give you similar picture uh, UIB pattern. Now, UIB, as you know, it's a, a histopathology uh, term. And in the slides that you might get uh, in the board question, they will give you a description of the slides. So the description of the CT scan in UIB, there will be a lower loop predominant reticulation, pleural based honeycombing. So these terms, these describing the UIB pattern in the CT scan. Now in the pathology, you will see in the, path, in the pathology slides that they are describing uh, honeycombing but they will tell you there is a fibrogenic fossae, and this is one of the descriptions uh, of the UIB pattern, and it will be heterogeneous fibrosis, so it will not be the slide full of fibrosis, it will be scattered here and there, and that is the fibrogenic fossae. And so if you, uh, if you see in the question these descriptions in the CT scan and the pathology slides, um, you can just start talking about that they are talking about UIB pattern. Now, um, here they are describing, as I mentioned, you need to define yourself. Is it uh, upper or lower loop, uh, central or peripheral, segmental or diffuse, heterogeneous or homogeneous? Um, honeycombing is a very important subplural. Now, subplural sparing. Um, it's more with NSIB than because we know that UIB involved there's a involvement of the uh, plural subplural space. Ground glass it's less in UIB but more common in uh, cellular uh, type of uh, NSIB. Now in CT scan sometimes you see few things that will guide you toward the pathology because as I mentioned UIB is a pathological term that can be caused by different uh, diseases um, and if you ca if you will not be able to find any of these so at that time you will call it idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis but uh, you can see for example pleural uh, calcification and that will guide you toward the asbestosis uh, you can see if you see arthropathy uh, that will uh, guide you toward like there's a connective tissue disease like rheumatoid arthritis uh, or uh, systemic sclerosis, dilated esophagus in case of uh, scleroderma, if you see it in the CT scan um, or other uh, features, uh, so that will guide you toward scleroderma. Uh, subcutaneous calcification also in case of systemic uh, sclerosis or hyperdense liver, uh, for example, if you see that in case of amiodarone, <coughs> amiodarone toxicity. History is very important to rule out any occupational lung disease and 
to see medications, to see other uh, connective tissue uh, related lung disease. So IBF, um, we talked about uh, about that. It's more with the peripheral reticulation, honeycombing, less ground glass and less consolidation, and it's a lower lobe predominant. That's the radiological description of uh, UIB. And the pathological description of uh, UIB, or the, as I mentioned, the fibrogenic fossa is very important, and the heterogeneous fibrosis. These two words, um, very important, and you might see from the description uh, in the histology slides. These are um, uh, CT scans for idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis, and that will just show you the honeycombing and the fibrogenic fossae, these red uh, dots, and you will see it's uh, just uh, focal uh, fibrogenic fossae, not that what we call it heterogeneous, not homogeneous fibrosis. And that's just uh, uh, just a cross section of the lung causing traction bronchiectasis and honeycombing. And that's a traction. If you see like a traction bronchiectasis, that will indicate a chronic process. And um, now there is a uh, differential between or uh, so UIB and uh, I uh, and UIB pattern in the CT scan as I mentioned can be caused by different uh, pathology one of them either it's IBF or connective vascular disease now they found that uh, the progno prognosis in case of connective vascular disease is better than IBF and the differences between these two diseases for example Connective vascular disease more common in uh, women and non-smoker, and they have better survival, and usually they are younger age. Fibrogenic fossae, they are less in uh, the uh, connective tissue uh, vascular disease, more in IBF. Honeycombing, less in connective tissue disease, more in, um, in IBF. The germinal center, which is a germinal centers of inflammation, these are the ones that they cause more of a ground glass, the inflammation. So it's not like a fibrosis yet. It's just causing some inflammation. And it's not fibrosed yet. And they are more common in connective vascular disease. And that's why they are maybe more responsive to treatment than uh, diabetic pulmonary fibrosis because they are less in IBF. And uh, sometimes... Uh, you will see connective vascular disease uh, with less honeycombing, but with UIB better. So, for example, here it's a different picture. If you see the CT scan, the first one, um, you can see some uh, like esophageal dilatation in case, uh, and there's a UIB pattern, reticulations, lower lobe predominant. Uh, as we mentioned, that can give you a hint that this could be a connective vascular disease uh, like uh, scleroderma causing this disease. Um, here, um, in the other slides, you can see there's a scarring, uh, a scar here on the uh, left uh, upper loop. Um, and these actually sometimes you need to keep attention on that because that there's a high chance that they might turn into malignancy like adenocarcinoma in on top of scarring. So even if you are following uh, like a patient with IBF or UIB pattern, if you see a nodules or a scarring, these might turn into adenocarcinoma. So sometimes there is atypical UIB pattern. Uh, like for example, you can see UIB uh, in like a ground glass bilateral. And uh, at that time, the only way to diagnose that is not by imaging. So because UIB pattern in CT scan, sometimes you don't have to do a, a biopsy because it's very typical in the CT scan. But in these cases, you don't know exactly what's going on. So you send the patient for a open lung biopsy and the pathology will come back with UIB pattern. Um, so that's a atypical presentation, uh, which is a ground glass predominance. 
asymmetric involvement like this case the bottom one that you see more involvement of the disease than the other one and that's usually like atypical for UIB which is bilateral and that's something you need to keep in mind a focal air trapping where you see you think uh, maybe that's not very typical for that but uh, there will be some fibrosis causing maybe airway obstruction and can cause some fib some air trapping in one of the lobule and there's like a pulmonary ossification uh, like in the bottom uh, case that can guide you sometimes in case of uh, systemic sclerosis and sometimes you see although there will not be much inflammation or ground glass in advanced cases of IPF or UIP but sometimes you can see some lymphadenopathy uh, there and uh, that may be just because of the disease itself and uh, sometimes like a congestive heart failure picture uh, can be um, on top of this uh, disease or fibrosis here um, if you can see there is a pericardial um, uh, thickening or uh, or congestive heart failure related and here like there is a air leak and um, infection uh, there is air, air level or fluid level there it's like a crescent sign yeah and here what I talked before that mm -hmm. there will be sometimes a scarring there that you need to uh, just keep watch watching because um, even a non-smoker with the scarring can turn into a malignancy so there's something to keep in mind that that might happen in in case of uh, IBF here like some air leak due to the low compliance of the lung uh, that can cause a pneumomediastinum So that's uh, what we talked about this, uh, the IBF or UIB pattern. So the thing that you need to remember in the description of the CT scan, lower low predominant, less ground glass, pleural-based honeycombing, uh, traction bronchiectasis. Um, these the in the CT scan uh, that you can uh, pay attention to. In the pathology, fibrogenic fossae and heterogeneous uh, fibrosis. These are the two words that you need to look into the description there and honeycombing they will mention that in the pathology slides so just to move into another uh, pathology in the CT scan uh, which is like 42 year old male with a one year history of progressive dyspnea and mild exertion and the chronic dry cough so here's the CT scan you can see some you can describe it as reticulation and that's the section that you can look there's a lower loop predominant uh, sparing the pleural space if you can maybe say on the more on the right side it's more obvious that it's there's a sub pleural sparing so the ground glass also, that that there was some yeah. ground glass inflammation you bet, you bet, you bet. yeah so that which is not common in uh, IBF or UIB but uh, pleural sparing subpleural sparing and some ground glass inflammation so that maybe goes more with NSIB now so the finding will be some ground glass and reticular obesities lower lobe predominant and subpleural sparing traction bronchiectasis and lower lobe uh, volume loss so these are the description of the NSIB and as you know, there is like two types of NSIB, either cellular type or fibrotic type. They are more common in case of connective tissue disease. So you might need to look into underlying pathology. That's why we order all the connective tissue disease workup to look for these uh, uh, diseases. So the cellular type will be more of a ground glass type of picture. And... Uh, 
but the description and that's the, the important thing like in the questions sometimes they put um, homogeneous homogeneous fibrosis so it will be the slide will be homogeneous all its fibro without fibrogenic fossae so the fibrogenic fossae is more specific for the in the UIB pattern but uh, homogeneous fibrosis uh, less uh, or no fibrogenic fossae that more with um, uh, NSIB If I interrupt you for a second, uh, for for like just a point, like for UIP patient, like if if you don't see a UIP pattern, always think it's an NSIP. If you don't see a UIP pattern, the CT scan. So if there's no specific like cystic or anything like else, so you can still call it NSIP because the subplural sparing is not a like something that you will see in all NSIP patients. The, the the state like the the severity of ground glass itself it could be like changeable from mild to high, like a lot or the the traction bring X you might see a little bit but any pattern that it's not significant UIP and it's not significant organizing pneumonia or cystic lung disease you still can call it like blame it on an NSIP yeah. that would be a situation where to consider a surgical biopsy yeah. because yeah. we have discordance between pathology and, and uh, radiology yeah. in certain UIB patients and you find it on... Radiology. Yeah, that's what we talked about, like there's atypical right. UIB, which is sometimes predominant grounded right. glass, and it, the pathology, and I have a patient who came back with UIB better. Right, besides UIB does not equate IBF, you can see it in collagen. Yeah, which is, that's very, very important. UIB is not IBF. It's, uh, yeah. You know, yeah. pathology co correlate or radiology correlate of uh, IBF. Does it mean that patient has IBF? Yeah, but these uh, terms, I'm just uh, stressing on that because the board the question, sometimes they will just tell you this. Uh, uh, for example, if you hear fibrogenic fossae, that's yes, UIB. That's yeah. If you hear heterogeneous fibrosis, that's UIB. Homogeneous fibrosis, that's more NSIB. Yeah. Uh, honeycombing, you put UIB. So these terms that's very important in guiding you uh, to a question for example if you hear like more of a ground glass in a CT scan you will take off UIB from your well, differential diagnosis yeah, because that, that will give you a mm -hmm. ground glass super yes. uh, that's why like clinical as uh, Dr. Rani said for exam yes for sure but for your clinical uh, thinking like UIB is not IPF UIP is a UIP is just a radiological pattern that you need to put in your mind in SIP it's a radiological pattern. It could be from anything. UIP could be from anything. And in SIP in the in the CT scan or UIP in the CT scan doesn't mean that you will see the same in the pathology. So the CT features uh, here's the pathological features, which is you need to remember, like the homogeneous and uh, without fibrogenic fossae and uh, much less honeycombing. Uh, now. The CT features, you will see like a predominant ground glass um, with some reticulations. And if you can see the subpleural sparing, that will be, well, that will be helpful. Uh, that's the same description, uh, which is like a ground glass uh, reticulation. And you can see here the subpleural sparing, if you can maybe imagine that you might just see that there is subpleural sparing. So here, like uh, ciliar NSIB, and because of this, like more of inflammation, uh, there is a good response, like to steroid, as you can tell uh, from left to right. So there is a good response, and because usually these uh, diseases, like mostly, like related to underlying uh, connective tissue disease, and uh, they. They can go with the treatment. So here's the difference, differences, differences between uh, ground uh, IPF and NSIB. As we mentioned, honeycombing, basal uh, predominance, subpleural involvement, and the other one is more ground glass, patchy distribution, and subpleural sparing. So these are the just the pattern of reticulations and as I mentioned opening the CT scan with the coronal section to give you just a quick glance of what's the ma the major part of the pathology going into the CT scan that might be helpful so any question of that
because now we maybe talked about the articulation we're gonna move into other um, other thing so a 45 year old African American male with a three month history of cough increasing dyspnea and intermittent fevers here's the CT scan so how, what's the majority of here like what you are seeing it's different than the other CT scans like nodules so your ma major pathology here like is nodularity yeah so uh, that will shift your differential into a different uh, side uh, not talking about IBF or your NSIB that will shift you into a nodule pathology um, so you need now after we are talking about nodularity we need to narrow our differential so as we mentioned nodularity you need to define yourself is it along the bronchovascular bundle or lymphatic drainage as we know pleural surface and fissures they are very high like with lymphatics and the bronchovascular bundle so and as we talked at the beginning about the secondary lobule you need to define these if you can where it locates from the secondary lobule for example if you see it in the center of the secondary lobule that will shift your differential from these kind of nodules which is along along the lymphatic uh, type of diseases so if you see here like it goes along the fissure the bronchovascular bundle here's the same and this is the section that I like so once you look here you can tell that it's a nodules um, it's uh, maybe upper and middle zone predominant there's a fissure involvement as you can tell and there's a mediastinal adenopathy so um, so what we talked about like here what do you think Yes, macroidosis, because others, uh, they are not. Now, silicosis can can give you, like, maybe similar uh, thing, but uh, not as... Why is not military, military tuberculosis? This is more, of course, predominant in the upper and middle. This one is not, like, all It's not military life. It doesn't have to be military tuberculosis. Like it, should be like size, it should be in the center, maybe, the, it's not in the peripheral. No, it's not central, it'll be like the middle. Like, you will see like multiple small nodules, and it could be along the whole system, but uh, how long it could be, like just with the lymphatic or with the peribronchial. Well, the other thing, like military tuberculosis, usually it's not presented with bilateral hyaline lymphadenopathy with it. But it still could be, but just like the the most correct answer would be. Yeah, and, and miliary TB as it's an infection, it's like the malignancy or metastasis, more like a, with the blood. So where's the blood supply? So if you want to narrow things more, I would maybe upper middle zone, it's more with sarcoidosis, but lower maybe it, it can go the whole lung, but maybe it's because the blood supply goes more to the lower loop. Um, so, and the history, uh, well, that goes without saying that history is very important yeah. to differentiate things. Yeah. It's hard to say, I mean, if that CT scan, I was in the film. Yeah, I cannot say what just the CT scan. Pathologic, you know, diagnosis yeah, of these yeah. patients. Because it yeah. looks very small. I mean, yeah. if this... If I was in the Even malignancy, you can have, you know. Yeah. Uh, I mean, if I was in the Philippines and this is a CT scan I showed, yeah. it's TB. I'm it's TB, that's right. Word. But if I was right. somewhere African American or something like that, yeah. it's sarcoid before, you know. Or if the patient with acute symptoms in the hospital, I will yeah. say it's TB. And you need to change your mask. I know, I know. <laughs> <laughs> I know. We are vaccinated. You so got destroyed, yes. <laughs> I'm not. Yeah, no, that's right. One dose. <laughs> So the findings here, if we go with sarcoidosis, usually it's a very lymphatic nodule. And as I mentioned, you need to, uh, all the time, to put where is the major pathology going on. So here, like along the fissure or pleural surface, 
that more with lymphatic uh, issues, lymphatic disease. Uh, and uh, the bronchovascular bundle also, it's uh, uh, like follows with uh, lymphatics. Um, so mid and upper lung zone, if there's like a lymphadenopathy, that also will help you to um, go more with uh, lymphatic uh, diseases. So here, what we got about the secondary lobule um, and the bronchovascular bundle in the center of this lobule uh, uh, and it accompanied by the lymphatic drainage and the lymphatic will be on the surrounding of the secondary lobule and um, uh, so that's the, <coughs> the interlobular septa, the, vis the pleura and the fissure will be uh, rich with these lymphatics. So all the time you see nodules, you need to decide uh, where is like where are these nodules are they like in the perilymphatic area? Are they random everywhere? Are they if you can see the secondary lobule? Are they in the center of the secondary lobules? Are they accompanied by are they related to a small airways? Because these will just narrow your differential diagnosis if you can get uh, a good image and a good um, uh, just imagination uh, about the images um, because uh, very lymphatic it goes more with as we mentioned like sarcoidosis a random maybe miliary tb it's everywhere um, centrilobular as we talked at the beginning because it's in the center of the secondary lobule it's along the airway so you can imagine that these are related to an inhalational issue either smoking related or uh, hypersensitivity pneumonitis that carries the antigen all the way to this airway and cause inflammation around it now you need also to uh, after you decide that this the majority of this pathology is nodules you need to define as i mentioned upper or lower uh, central or lateral um, you need to define uh, are they uh, clustered or diffuse uh, or uh, you can um, are they solid nodules or ground glass nodules these are also some uh, differentiation or classification that you can uh, uh, guide yourself with as we talked, like for example, lymphatic related either sarcoidosis, silicosis or lymphangetic spread uh, random uh, either miliary infection or metastasis inhalational as I talked before it could be like centrilobular uh, as uh, RBILD or subacute HB now the difference between these uh, uh, RBILD will be more solid nodules uh, subacute HB will be more ground glass um, both upper middle loop predominant Small airways, either cellular bronchiolitis or band bronchiolitis. Um, these are uh, different kind of pathology than the other. I think they changed. Uh, are they still like calling acute, subacute, and chronic? HP no, they changed. They changed yeah. yeah, it's just a CT, uh, CT pathology. Yeah. yeah. So these are the same thing. Where are these nodules? Uh, the density of these nodules. The ground glass, they are different than solid nodules. Um, are they uh, sharp edge or poorly defined uh, morphology? Are they branching, tree and bud pattern? Uh, these are also uh, different. Uh, yeah, for example, as I mentioned before, these are along bronchovascular bundle along the lymphatics. Uh, the, if you see the interlobular septum, the pleura, the fissure, and the bronchovascular bundle, these are more with the perilymphatic uh, nodularity. And these are, you can narrow your differential with sarcoidosis or silicosis or lymphangetic spread. So this uh, can tell you like about the CT scan, where it goes, the mediastinal adenopathy, along the fissure interlobular septum and the pleural uh, space and the pathology. The description, actually in the board the question, they will give you like descriptions, like uh, you will see non caseating granuloma, so and you need to know. So they will give you, for example, a, a pathology description and they will put, uh, uh, they might not put a CT scan, but just a pathology description and you need to 
decide on the on the diagnosis. Uh, once they mentioned it's a uh, small nodules along the bronchovascular bundle. There's mediastinal adenopathy, slides or pathology shows non-caseating granuloma, so you go with uh, with the diagnosis. Do you see it, guys, in the pathology which he's talking about? You know, where the, what's the structures in there? In pathology? Any of the fellows? You know, where's the alveoli and where's the septa and where's the granuloma and where's the cellular or, you know? Go, go. Hamza can show us. You have the arrow. The where's the alveoli? Use the green arrow. <laughs> yeah, where's your alveoli? Green, so like, yeah, it's over there. He can go next. He can go next. Yes, that's right. Game <laughs> <laughs> yes. after you finish. Go. <laughs> I think in the corner. Oh, the alveoli, right? No? Yeah, you're right. Yeah, yeah. 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 Mostly. And then between the alveoli, those small lines, the pink with the small brown dots. What, this what's one, the, this one? Yeah, what's the, these lines? This is the interstitial, no? Yes, that's the inter interalveolar septum or the interstitial, is that right? And that's mm -hmm. small, small black cells, that's a cellular component of, like, there's a lot mm -hmm. of cells in it. And then, do you see the green arrow? Mm -hmm. And that's that's like big focus. What's that? That's the only thing obvious. Mm -hmm. None case, like, non non that's right. Granuloma. It's granuloma. There's multiple cells, lymphocytes and uh, macrophages, and uh, multi giant nucleated cells, and there's no caseation in the middle. It's well formed usually. It's that's compact right. and dense. Do you, do you know, like you saw, like a uh, caseating granuloma yeah, and sarcoidosis. Yeah, yeah. You know, I have a case, like typical even, sarcoidosis. Even Pathology came back as caseating yeah. granuloma. But yeah. I'm not, uh, and I don't know what to do. With the, yeah, what you see in real life different from what comes yeah. in there. And which is really important board, yeah. from board, what Dr. Z said, wool formed or not wool formed. That's how you differentiate between it and like a hypersensitive pneumonitis. You can, it can be like a granuloma as well, but it's not wool formed granuloma. Yeah, that, that's, wool yeah, formed granuloma. Yeah. that's for the board the question. They will tell yeah. you in the description uh, poorly formed non caseating granuloma. So well done, the differential will shift mm -hmm. you. That's why the yield will be high for bronchoscopy because of the distribution. Even with endobronchial biopsy, sometimes you might find uh, these no. granulomas. You might get so, that if you can tell here along the fissure. Uh, there is uh, more nodularity here the same along the fissure and there is atypical always there is all the time there is atypical uh, presentation for example these are like irregular nodules um, that can happen and it still can be in sarcoidosis Sometimes there is a distortion uh, in the sarcoidosis cases where because of the uh, significant uh, load of the nodules, it can cause architectural destruction or distortion. And still you can see it in the case of sarcoidosis. This is like along the fissure. And uh, there will be like some, um, if you see the airway, there will be angulation of the angulated bronchovasculature due also to the involvement of the disease. Scarring, as you know, in advanced cases of sarcoidosis that can, can give you uh, interstitial or reticulation, not modularity, but reticulation and scarring. With advanced stage, significant fibrosis and honeycombing can also happen and uh, traction bronchiectasis and bronchiectasis can happen with advanced uh, sarcoidosis. So it can happen, this also, with, uh, if you look here, you can tell this is uh, just an a UIB, but actually pathology came back with sarcoidosis, as they mentioned. There's what we call alveolar sarcoidosis, where you can still get, not nodules, but uh, ground glass, and that can still be with the biopsy, can come back with uh, non caseating granuloma. <coughs> So um, if you can see here, there is a prominent uh, interlobular uh, septum, 
and fibrosis that's a lobular thickening what we call it because of the involvement and uh, sometimes in the airway uh, actually because there's there's endobronchial sarcoidosis involvement that can give you obstructive pattern uh, of sarcoidosis that can give you air trapping or poly or emphysema and even in the breathing and the PFT patient can present with obstructive lung disease a common cause also for assist formation yeah. secondary fungal infection or fungal spore okay so I think we can stop here uh, we can continue uh, thank you uh,